We're going out on a Tuesday. You remember that song? Yeah, dude. Club yeah. going up on a Tuesday. That brings me back to like mine days. Exactly. Working at City Bike. We're a couple of old dudes. <laughs> we've been around the block a couple of times and we've seen some things, strange things. And that's why we started this podcast, the Mega Strange Podcast. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Mega Strange Tuesday Mailbag. We're going to be answering messages from the Mega Strange Hotline. And checking in with all our Mega Strange correspondents out there across America, we are your hosts, Derek and Johnny. How you doing, Johnny? I just want to talk some shit today. Okay, go ahead. You know, when whenever I tell people I do a paranormal podcast with my friend Derek, they're always like, oh, another one? Uh, a, a drop in the, the ocean? Really? I've listened to all these other paranormal podcasts, and I, I just got to say, I think we're the best. Honestly, I, I'm not going to say we're the best, but I have to <laughs> hand it to us. We just started this podcast less than a year ago, and I think we're in the top 10% of paranormal podcasts I'm out saying. there. I'm not saying we're the best, but rookie of the year, yeah, definitely, 100%. Not only do we have a sponsor, Cryptid Crate, use the Shout special out. discount code, Mega Strange, for uh, 25% off your first month subscription to Cryptid Crate, but we have a very strong following, exactly. um, and we're still with like less than 50 episodes in. We're killing it. And that is a testament to all of our viewers out there. Thank you very much. Who's been talking crap about us? I'm just saying, I just, you know, I tell people and they and they're like, oh, you know, another another paranormal podcast. You I'm know, like mm. there were some people who didn't believe in us when we started, but I think that we are changing hearts and changing minds with every single episode we exactly. do. They see that we have better research than 90% of the podcasts out there, and we have better personalities than hundred percent. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to enter my rap phase where I just like talk shit and start shit. I've so definitely gone through that phase as an entertainer and it does not work. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, never mind. You, I take it you, all back. You want to hurry right into your rock uh, inspirational building your mana, building your power. It's about drive. It's about power. Yeah, people love that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's I'm basically like the rock. I'm the little rock. They call me the pebble. They call hey, me, anyways, they call uh, me gra- the, uh, the gravel. Listen, we have mega strange viewers <laughs> all over the world. And in a way that puts mega strange all over the world. That's right. Eyes and ears in every country, in every corner of the globe. Mega strange correspondence. You are viewers watching this. And if you see something strange out there, call up our hotline and report it. Today, we have a couple of stories from some loyal viewers that we're excited to share with you because they are very tantalizing and mysterious and i'm excited to get to them i don't know for some reason the word tantalizing whenever someone says it i like feel like a a, a tingle on my tongue that's exactly what the word is supposed to evoke does it because i'm always like mm, like mm, i get a little tingle yeah, you you get tantalized <laughs> well prepare to uh oh, man prepare to be tingled up today uh do some asmr we're gonna get those tingles going let's get it started what's the first call okay you don't want to hear me do it more as we have the whole episode. Hey, mega strangers. Uh, growing up, I had this crazy uncle who was into a lot of uh, supernatural stuff. Nice. And Just he like had me. this group that uh, thought they were talking to ETs using uh, one of the members as a sort of spiritual medium. Wow. Uh, my <laughs> uncle said it all started when the medium, uh, Stuart, was complaining to his neighbor about insomnia. Uh, so naturally, his neighbor offered to hypnotize him in an attempt to induce sleep. Of course, but pretty much as soon as Stuart went under, all these different personalities uh, started taking over and and started talking at length. Um, It was a somewhat diverse cast. Um, There was uh, this one snooty droid type who talked like this, and and there was uh, like a lizard man who like talk. He talked like this, Um, and yeah, the Stuart did these voices, uh, and he was totally conked out. And, uh, yeah, one way or another, they deduced it was some sort of, like, psychic ET connection, and they started pumping him for all these answers about, you know, the alien universe. Uh, And I remember one story that kind of stuck out to me when I was a kid. Uh, My uncle told me about this session where they talked to the ETs, and they learned that the ETs liked McDonald's so much that they uh, started some on their own planet. Um, Did I mention that Stewart's morbidly obese? or was morbidly obese, I should say, not to bury the lead. Um, So, yeah, I have a lot more stories like that uh, from their sessions. Um, In case you can't tell, I was, you know, always a little bit skeptical of it, but it was always very entertaining. Um, Yeah, so just let me, yeah, just 
if you want more stories, just ask. And yeah, thanks for the show, you guys. Wow. I well, have so many fucking questions. Yeah, please share more stories about Stuart. So I need to know. To recap, our caller uh, had an uncle who was a part of a group that would, would use their friend Stuart to psychically communicate with extraterrestrials. That's the first question I have. What is this group? Did they have a name? Was it like... Well, we have a couple of interesting eclectic groups here in San Diego. Sometimes, you know, a group of people get together to just experiment and do strange things. I guess. I've never been in one of these groups before, so I don't really have... Uh, we could sign you up for a group. You can go <laughs> undercover. I Dude. actually think you would. people would love to see you go undercover in like an esoteric group <laughs> of some sort. I love, speaking of ASMR, I love videos of esoteric healing. That shit cracks me up. Uh, I, there's these, sorry, I'm going to go a little tired. Go for uh, it. There's this video of this guy and he keeps, he always, he starts the video. I showed it to you in, in a Johnny brain when I did ASMR where he talks about how like God came to him and told him he had to stop being a, a lawyer and it was time to heal people. Okay. And he, he or no, he's a, a chiropractor. And, he, and so the way he heals people, he like puts their legs up and then he like holds one up higher and he's kind of like, hmm. You're out of alignment. And then he like heals their alignment and then he holds their legs up together the same length. He's like, I healed you. And he, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I feel like I went on a fucking tirade with no end in sight. But uh, I don't know. Well, I'm using well right now. <laughs> um, so our caller was, uh, while well, their uncle was using Stuart to communicate with ETs. So Stuart had insomnia and they hypnotized him to cure his Obviously. insomnia. To me, the strangest part of this story is in the session of hypnosis, new personalities started emerging with distinct voices. Mm -hmm. Some people might say that Stuart may have had some personalities uh, disorder or some sort of multiple personality disorder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, going on. I don't know if that's the or correct. Or just a tune. If that's the uh, modern. Yeah, like the PC term. Or accepted term. Uh, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Interesting to me that people would not assume that at first. That would be my first assumption, that it's a psychological thing happening. Not an extraterrestrial psychic communication. Hypnotism can bring, especially if you're susceptible to it, can bring out some weirdness in the brain. So that would also be my like first de like deduction. Uh, you ever had uh, experience with hypnotism? No, I just, I, I've tried. I just, I... I just think I, what I've heard is you have to really have a brain that's like willing to, to be hypnotized. And I think I just have too much kind of anxiety for it to work. Like I've tried, I've tried and it's always like, I I'm just in the end person. Like you're going to be a duck. And I'm kind of like, I guess I'm a duck. Like, I'm sorry. Will you explain this you, hypnotism you, session? Yeah, no, no. You know, what, like, when, let's like, take us like back, parties. take no. us back to your hypnotism story. I'm, so when were you hypnotized? Uh, no, uh, I wasn't hypnotized, but at my school on senior week, they, they brought in a hypnotist okay. to do it on stage. And he was like, in the audience, you can uh, go along with you this. You can go along with it. And I tried and I was like, this isn't working. Okay. And then my friend next to me, I have a theory. My friend next to me, yeah. he like the whole <laughs> fucking thing. He like, he's like, I'm going to do it. And then the whole show, he was uh, like out. And then at the end, the, the hypnotist was kind of like, for those who are still out, um, when I snap my fingers, uh, you're going to wake up and you're going to be a dog. And then he snapped his fingers and my friend next to me was like, <laughs> like, just started, like acting like a dog. And to this day, I think my man just took the opportunity to take a nap and thought it would be funny to act like a dog. Cause, cause I try, like I, I, what I've read about hypnotism, like stage hypnotism, it's just like you're on stage and you feel awkward. Like yeah. you have to do it. So is that the extent of your hypnotism? Yeah. I'm just saying like experience. I, yeah. I have a lot more hypnotism experience than you do. Yeah. I've never, I just only, I've only ever seen like stage hypnotism. Shows. I'll, I'll share my stories, okay. multiple stories actually. Uh, not only have I seen hypnotist shows, I've been in a stage hypnotist show. I've hypnotized people and then I oh, lived shit. with a professional hypnotist, which was extremely uncomfortable and I'm pretty sure he should be in jail and may yeah. have gone to jail. So let me share some of these stories. Can I just ask you real quick? Is like, do you right now, 
think hypnotism is bullshit or do you think it's like a real thing that can be done? 100% real. Oh shit. One, no question. Okay. It's not even a gray area. It's a binary yes or no. And the answer is yes. Okay. Because I've, I've experienced so many things with it. Shit. So when I was a kid, I went to the county fair, the, when we filmed the fair cast at, yeah. I was probably like nine or 10 years old. I already been doing stage acting for a few years and my parents, you know, want to see the hypnotism show there. And they're like, we need volunteers for the hypnotism show. And I raised my hand. Yeah. And they took me on stage and I'm a little kid. Honestly, I'm like 10, maybe 11, I want to say. And in my mind at that point, I'm thinking, I don't know if hypnotism is real and yeah. I don't know if this is going to work on me, but I'm going to go along with it and I'm going to just go along with it as far as like the hypnotist will take me out if it's not working yeah. was my assumption. So he put us on stage and he's going through this whole pattern. He's doing the hypnotism thing. Like, okay, imagine what I'm saying and you're walking downstairs and now you're floating on clouds and now you're in the ocean and you're sinking and you're sinking and people are like falling asleep next to me left and right. Yeah. And the hypnotist and I have my eyes closed and I'm going along with it. And the hypnotist is coming up and he's like tapping people like you can sit down. I know it's not working. You can sit down. Okay. I know it's not working. Shit. But he never taps me out. Dude. And I'm sitting there waiting to be tapped out. Yeah. But he never taps me out. And then he puts, he gives me uh, some trance. And I think the thing he gave me was like, when I give you the command, I don't know what it is. I don't remember what the command was. He's like, you're going to act like the road runner from Wile E. Coyote. Okay. And he's like, you can go back to your seat. And I remember he's like, all right, Derek wake up and I like woke up and he's like you can go back to your seat and in my mind I'm an actor at this point yeah I'm an 11 year old kid I love the attention and I definitely feel That's what I'm saying obligated yeah. to go along with this so I go back to my seat and I'm and I, I'm going along with it I never at any point conked out or lost consciousness and when he does the trigger whatever it is touches his nose or says the word I jump out of my seat and I start running around going like a dumbass kid. Me, 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 me. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, Derek, freeze. And I stopped doing it. And he's like, all right, you're released. Ha ha. The audience is going nuts and they're eating it up. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of love it. And I go back to the chair, my chair, and my parents are making fun of me so yeah. bad. They're like, oh, you got hypnotized. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell my parents, like, I was just playing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't believe me. They're like, you weren't playing along. You jumped up and ran. And yeah. I was like, no, but I, I mean, I just did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt so bad because my parents like never believed me. I was like, I'm just faking it. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's that. But then I'm like 11 years old and I'm like telling my friends, like I was at the hypnotist show at the fair and they're like, oh, dude, how'd it go? And I was like, well, I remember everything the hypnotist said. Yeah. Like, I'll just say it to you right now. So I sat down with my friends and I repeated everything the hypnotist said. And my fucking friend, Mike, Michael, fucking passed out. What the fuck? And we're there sitting there like, bro, wake up. And he's like not doing it. No, that's fucked up. So then I'm like, all right, I'm going to put the trigger in. Like when I say this, you're going to wake back up. And then we, in my mind, I'm thinking like, he's fucking with us. Yeah, like, that's what I would assume as he's well. He's fucking with us. But I want to test him. So we are in a bedroom. We start playing like Sega Genesis. And we're just fucking playing it for like an hour. And I casually say the word and then he comes back to wake, yeah. you know, instantly. And we're like, bro, you were hypnotized. But he says the same shit I said. Like, no, I was just playing along with yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So that was us as kids with hypnotism. It was always like that. We're, we're just playing along with it or not. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is like a long no, story. No, no, no. I, I'm loving it. All right. So then later on in life. I was like 19 or 20 and I um, needed some roommates quickly. You know, sometimes you have roommates and they just move out suddenly and yeah. you're like, fuck, I have like nine days to get a, a new roommate in here or else I, like it's either get a new roommate in or find a new place to live. Yeah, exactly. It was that situation. So I put a Craigslist ad out and I got this guy to move in and his job was, <laughs> I probably talked about this guy on the podcast before, but motivational speaker slash magician slash hypnotist. They're always, that's like, I don't know what it is about shitty dudes where they're a motivational speaker, hypnotist, and like a magician. Yes. And by the way, I'm like 19 and this dude's oh, no. 23. So to me, he's older and wiser and, no. ha and has his shit together. And I think about this now 
<laughs> all these years later, I'm like 23 year old motivational speaker. Like, Bruh. fuck that guy. What's he going to know about life? You're a fucking magician. Do you you're you're do you a joke. Do you remember his name? Like, not absolutely. I know his name. No, like, don't like, can you Google 100%, him? 100%. I could still Google around? him. <laughs> I could Google him. I'm not going to, okay. though. Uh, I did see him years later and he was no longer doing this because he had gone to jail for some unrelated story that I could share. This dude was a fucking wild character. This dude Every was time, a fucking wild. Okay. What, sorry. I, I don't even know. I have so many stories about this guy yeah. and none of them are good. I just want to say usually they're when, all interesting. When someone is that combo, they're also a pickup artist. So let me tell you, They've let me also tell you, read the game. Let me tell you, let me tell you. <laughs> so this guy and trigger warning, this is going to get creepy. Yeah. This is going to get a little sexually skeevy. And <laughs> that's who this guy was. Uh, just real quick uh, to that person who called in, call in again. Sorry. Anyway. Please call in again. Look at how good this episode is already. <laughs> um, so when I first met him, I'm like, yeah, you're a motivational speaker. You're a hypnotist. We have a lot of conversations about a lot of different things, but the hypnotism thing he tells me is like, yeah, I'm a hypnotist. And I'm like, I kind of tell him my story. Like, I think people like kind of just fake it. And he's like, no way they do it for real. And I'm like, okay, he's so creepy. And he tells me this story. He's like, me and my friend who went to hypnotist school one time. We There's got hypnotist school? Yeah. Oh, God. He's like, one time we got these girls and we hypnotized them. Long story short, he says that he hypnotized them to sexual climax. That's the, that's the best way for me to put it. I've seen like... <laughs> on like on YouTube, there's You've like... You've seen this? On, You've seen this? Dude, uh, back in the day... <laughs> I've never seen this. It's like, I'm surprised like, like what magicians or uh, <laughs> hypnotists will, will they'll do the, the fucking fair show for the kids. And then sometimes they'll do like they a do com adult, hypnotism. adult comedy yeah. club hypnotism. It's always like, when I snap my fingers, you're going to jizz. Exactly. Like, oh. Yeah, exactly. It's like, bro, fuck And off. he was like, he basically told me the story of like, we hypnotized them and they got naked and then, and, and then we hypnotized them to kaboom. All right. This is just a story. I just met this guy and I don't, I'm like, okay. Uh, he's like, uh, you, well, buddy, you, you said a climax. Bro? Literally. It was like, <laughs> so are you a good hypnotist? And that was his story. And yeah. I'm like, uh, cool. And also, by the way, I, this is my new roommate <laughs> who's just moved into my house. And I'm like, yeah, so you got the rent like that's due next week. This was such a I was this was a dumb situation. Uh, this is going to go on my pet peeve list. But uh, an <laughs> <laughs> another thing I hate is whenever like do shitty Ooh. dudes like try to connect with you over like sexual shit. I'm like, bro, yeah. I don't know you. Why are you telling me this? I hate that. It drives me crazy. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, if they're joke, if it's if they're really funny and like hilarious comedians and they're making dirty jokes, yeah. that's one thing. But when it's like. Yo, bro, high five. We did it. Yeah. It's we, like, nah. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> nah. Anyways. Anyways. So, uh, so I'm living with this hypnotist and I have these friends, my friends, and I like kind of brag to them a little bit like, yo, my, not brag, but you know, my new roommate's a freak. Yeah. He's a hypnotist. And immediately they're like, can he hypnotize us? Can he hypnotize us? And I'm like, he might be able to, I, I don't know. And so we're like, yo, bro, uh, my friends want to get hypnotized. You do it. He's so down. He's like, absolutely. Oh, my God. Bring him over. So it's my friend. Uh, you don't have to give him. Yeah, name. I'm not going to give his yeah, name. Yeah. It's my I'm going to say Ted. Ted. My friend Ted and his girlfriend come over and his girlfriend's friend. There's three of them. And they sit on my couch and I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't think it'll work on me. And he says, like, if you've ever been hypnotized before, I can hypnotize you like that. Okay. And this is why I think hypnotism is real. This story is why I think hypnotism is real because my friend Ted was like, I've been hypnotized before. And he's like, okay, then check this out. Sit on the couch. And he's like, stare at my hand. This is exactly what he did. Yeah. I'll never Don't forget this. Me. I'll never forget <laughs> this. This was the moment I like got chills. And I was like, hypnotism is real. He's like sitting on the couch, right? Ted, sit on the couch. And the hypnotist is standing in front of him and he's like, Puts his hand in front of his face. He's like, stare at my hand. Yeah. And he's like, okay. And he's like, put your fingers on my hand and try to push through my hand. Okay. Try to push through my hand, right? I know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he just moved his hand out of the way and just yeah. went sleep. Yeah. And my friend just like, uh, just like conked out. 
and it was weird. I've uh in high school, and this was not the oh. type of person we're by the way, yeah. not to cut you off. I want to hear what you have to mm-hmm. say. We're not on stage at the fair. We're in my living yeah. room, and this is a close friend. He has nothing to prove to me by faking. And we're like adults at this point. We're like, you know, 1920. So there's no there's no pressure to fake and go along with it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh I don't want to sound like a shitty dude, but like in high school. I thought hypnotism was cool and I did some research on it and that is a, there's a way of doing hypnotism where it kind of, uh, it's like reinducting. They've already gone through the process to take you there mentally and they can bring you back there instantly. You you know, in like when you're editing and you see a cut, that's really jarring. Yeah. Kind of like, it like fucks you up. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to like, uh, kind of caught startle you in a way that like your thought pattern is kind of, yeah. Because for some reason, our like brains like shut shut down when when there's like a, a really fast kind of like oh uh, like moment like that, and you're just like really in, like I've seen people people be able to hypnotize about uh, hypnotize people by like shaking their hand and just p- pulling them. So my friend Ted is instantly hypnotized, and then my my roommate goes through the process of hypnotizing his girlfriend and his girlfriend's friend, and all three of them are like zombies. Like, yeah. And then he starts giving him these suggestions and it's really funny. Like when I snap my fingers, you're not going to be able to speak English anymore. Oh my God. You know, and like snaps his fingers, but they're speaking gibberish. Yeah. But then this weird thing happens. And this again, hypnotism is real, but I think there's boundaries to it. If you want to be hypnotized, if you don't want to be. This to me was like kind of showed me the whole scope of hypnotism. What's possible. So my friend Ted, his girlfriend, We've been doing this for like 15 minutes. They're all they're all going along with it. They're all hypnotized. They're doing weird things. Mm. They don't know how to speak English. They're speaking alien languages. They like don't recognize each other. But then my friend who's a creep, not my friend, my roommate who's a creep, who hypnotized a girl to boom, right? Mm-hmm. He goes to my friend's girlfriend and, oh. and the implant is, <clears throat> all right, you're hypnotized. When I touch my ear... You're going to feel like your underwear is suddenly missing and you have to look around and he's explaining what she has to do. And in her trance out of nowhere, she kind of just goes Uh, and she like starts moving and he's like sleep, sleep, sleep. And she like goes back into the sleep. didn't want that. She goes back into the sleep and then he like reaffirms and he turns to all all of us and he goes, sometimes it just needs to be reaffirmed. And he goes, when I pull my ear, you're going to feel like your underwear is missing. And more clearly this time, she goes, no. (laughs) And then she like leans back and her eyes just go wide open. And she's like, what's going on? Yeah. And and then it was instantly like hypnotism session is over. It was very uncomfortable. And we asked our room, my roommate, I was like, what happened? And he's like, hypnotism it can only work. It can only make you do things that you are already willing to do. Exactly. And if you get an implant or a suggestion that goes against every fiber of your body, you're not just magically going to do it. You're, yeah. It's going to, it's going to break the trance. It's like, you know, it's like being in a nightmare and wanting to wake up. It, you can wake yourself up. Yeah. hundred percent. So that's what happened. Those that, are my hypnotism stories. That was crazy. Yo, fuck that guy. <laughs> you want to know what happened to that guy? Arrested. Yeah. He did get arrested. It has nothing to do with hypnotism, but he, uh, should I tell the story? I mean, if you think it's fucked, we could cut it, but if it's in, it's in, (laughs) you could tell it and and he, uh, want me to cut it later. He went, he had this whole scam. I actually made a, a a short film about this and I put it on my, Oh, my YouTube is channel. it, is it Solomon? Yeah. Yeah. He made it. He made, he, uh, he did this scam where he would buy things from Costco with a checking account. He would write checks for an account that had been closed. Yeah. And so there was no money. And then he would take the items to a different Costco and return them to get the oh, money. I knew so many dudes that did And, and like he that. was like bragging about this one day. And I'm like, but you're going to get caught. And he's like, that's the beauty of it. The account is in my mom's name. It's not even tied to me. And I was like, so the cops will just go to your mom's house and she'll turn you in. And he paused and he's like, no, no way. And I was like, all right, that was the end of it. We kind of moved out. We went our separate ways and I didn't see him for like five years. And I'm working at a bookstore one day and he walks in and I'm like, oh, bro, like I haven't seen you forever. What happened? He's like, you remember that Costco scam? And I was like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I went to jail for that. (laughs) And I was like, really? He's like, they caught me. They caught me. Uh, I worked with this dude that did a similar thing where he would buy stuff from uh, 
with the he, he'd get someone else's credit card information. He'd buy uh, shit from Target, Starbucks, uh, because when you return the stuff, uh, you could return it to Target. And since Target kind of doesn't have, they don't all have the Starbucks. They'll just give you cash back. Uh, so he would like mm, you're revealing the scams. Yeah, here so on he would do episode. that, and then he he. <laughs> I mean, it didn't work out for this guy. Oh, he went to jail. Oh yeah, they all got caught. Yeah, yeah. he to told jail. me don't that do this at home. He did it, and then one day it was just like. He, he was leaving. It was like, woo, like on all the, camera, all the cars uh, like they, they were just tracking him because like people don't realize, but like it, it happens thing. once and they notice it's happening in the same area. Like they'll they'll kind of yeah. they'll piece it together. Uh, he, he this dude said he fucking got in his car and went full police chase like he <laughs> this fucking, is your friend. He's not my friend. He was a coworker and he, oh. he fucking he, like he was telling me how he was surprised he got hired at this place. Because he had a police record, and I was like, "What? What was your police record?" And he's like, "Tell me about all all that thing." And then he's like, "I got into a full I, on police chase, and I, then he, he, his leg broke because he all he, right. he tried to jump out of the car." Now I'm gonna one up you. Anyway, I worked at <laughs> I worked at a pizza delivery place, and my manager at the time was younger than me by a year. I was yeah. 18, he was 17, and he rode motorcycle like those really fast ones. And he would tell me all the time, "He's like, you know what the best part about having a motorcycle is?" And I was like, "What?" He's like, "Cops can't catch you." And I was like, what? He's like, I've been in so many police chases. And he's like, and I just outrun the cops on my motorcycle. Oh my God. And he's like, and I get away. And that's what he would say. He's like, every time a cop tries to pull me over, I just speed off. He was 17. And uh, I had warrants. He probably did. He probably did. And I don't, you know, I'm going to say he could have been lying, but I believe him. I just, for whatever reason, believe him. Yeah. So. Wow, what a wild episode. Yeah. Um, I think that's good for today's sure, episode. Yeah, yeah. That was extra long, extra a weird, lot of, and strange. all based on one call. Thank yeah. you, caller, for that amazing story that inspired so many personal memories and stories to come out. We didn't even like kind of unpack that guy's call. Like, call in again. I want to talk more about his fucking, uh, why those aliens like McDonald's, et cetera. Et yeah, cetera. we didn't even talk about how that's probably the inspiration for the film Mac and Me. Exactly. Yeah, that's Mac and Me shit. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. If you see something out there, be sure you report it. Call the Mega 64. I'm sorry. The Mega 64 <laughs> podcast is every Sunday. Check it out. It's yeah. an amazing show. Call the Mega Strange Hotline. The number is in the information below. We have a new episode coming out this Saturday and every Saturday and a new hotline episode every Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe and follow us. Leave a comment and share this episode with one of your friends. We'll be back again soon with more strangeness. We'll see you next time. Bye.